Happy Monday, everybody. We're going to be talking today about geocaching in foreign countries. Stick around. There's a lot to think about before you go geocaching in a foreign country if you want to have a great geocaching experience that is more yellow smileys than blue smileys, more found geocaches than DNFs. The key to geocaching abroad in different countries is preparation. I've learned myself, um, I've learned this myself the hard way um, with uh, trying to geocache on the fly in an unusual country, an unusual area, something that I'm, a place that I wasn't familiar with, and it was a disaster. Um, but when I discovered that you can do so much more with your time, which is going to be precious because you don't have all the time in the world when you're in a foreign country, you're on a trip, you've got an itinerary, you've got a schedule, you've got to keep um, to get the most geocaching bang for your buck because let's face it, travel, good travel, isn't cheap. So you paid a lot of money to get here and see some great things and do some geocaching. So let's, um, let's make the most of it. First okay. off, the number one rule of geocaching um, in a foreign country is preparation. You want to be prepared. You want to take some time before you go, do your homework, know exactly um, what you're going to be doing when you're there, know exactly where you're going, and um, that way you can uh, grab caches efficiently. You want to study the places that you're going to be visiting, the different cities, take a look at the geocaches that are there and make yourself a list of the ones that are going to be the most uh, most fun for you, uh, the ones that you'd enjoy finding. Um, you want to pick them carefully. Look for ones um, you know that, that fit within the geocaches that you like to find. If you like to find multis and puzzles, then you want to find ones with high favorite points. Take a look at that, especially if you're a premium member. Be sure to take advantage of the uh, the favorite point system, sorting by favorites in the different areas that you're going. That's a great way to know um, where the best geocaches are, the ones that the local community really enjoys finding. Those are the ones you want to hit uh, for sure on your travels. I recommend reading all the logs and descriptions, even the hints. Um, let's face it, uh, you want to find these things. So uh, I like to recommend studying each one of those caches that you've picked out in depth. Read every log, read every description, every bit of it. Um, solve the puzzles before you go. That way you're, you're not, um, you've, got, you've got those final coordinates in hand before you even set out the door. Um, a lot of my geocaching friends do that. They solve tons and tons of puzzles at home um, in, their, in the evenings, and then they've got um, specific coordinates to go grab. Um, that's a great strategy when it comes, you wanna do your homework ahead of time. You want to download a pocket query. Um, I know I'm going to get some heat for this because not everybody does this still, but I like to use good old-fashioned old-fashioned GPS. Um, this is my Garmin Heatrex 30. I've used it extensively uh, geocaching. It's been to a number of different countries with me, and uh, I really enjoy using this Garmin. Um, a lot of folks cache with smartphones, and that's fine, um, but it, don't it's, it's hard to know exactly what the level of service is going to be when you're there. Um, so definitely, if you're going to use a smartphone, be sure to save offline lists. The, uh, the geocaching app now has the ability to save offline lists before it didn't. There are other ones out there that do, of course, Cachely, uh, CGO, a number of different um, competing geocaching apps that have, have let you save offline lists for a long time. Take advantage of that feature because you never know what kind of internet you're going to get, um, especially uh, in the Caribbean and in South America, places like that that don't have the reliable internet infrastructure that we're used to here, um, especially um, wireless. So um, I always recommend for anywhere that is off the beaten path, uh, a good bit away from large cities, um, go with the GPS and um, save your smartphone for taking videos like this one. You may have to take a look at translation. Um, if you're going to a country where the, the spoken language isn't necessarily English, you'll want to take a look at those caches and see if you can go to Google Translate. You'll get a rough translation of what, um, what the description is, the logs and whatnot. You should be able to, to figure out what they're trying to say if you're an experienced cacher. 
um, just by reading those translations. I wanted to talk about um, when you are saving your list. If you, if you do use a GPS like this one, you want to um, be sure to save GPX files, uh, not LOC files, location files. Um, those are two different file formats that are available to you through geocaching.com. There's a significant difference between them. Lock is the original uh, GPS format. It's very limited on the information. All you get is the coordinates and the name of the cache, uh, maybe a little snippet of description, but not nearly as much information is available to you in a lock file as is in a GPX file. GPX files include log information, they include the full description, they include um, the difficulty and, and uh, terrain uh, ratings on a cache, um, significantly more information in the GPX file, so that's what you want to get. Um, you do have to be a premium member at geocaching.com to download pocket queries. Um, one of the things we do for you at AMS Travel Sales is we put together a GPX file for you based on the destination that you're going to be visiting so you don't have to run that yourself. We just include all the geocaches in the, in the immediate uh, cities that you're going to be visiting on your tour or your cruise. So you have that handy. You can just download that right into your GPS and have that uh, ready for your geocaching adventure. So that's what we recommend for geocaching abroad. If you've enjoyed this little video, give it a like down below. Please subscribe to our, our channel if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos. Uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you every Monday about travel in the world of geocaching and um, or geocaching in the world of travel. It just depends on how you look at it. Um, so, like the video, comment below, tell me if you've got any tips and suggestions for geocaching in a foreign country. I'd love to hear them and um, look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day.